Hello, I am Jaehyung Park from Seoul National University, South Korea. It is a great honor for me to have this opportunity to give a keynote talk at ICRA 2020. It is very unfortunate that I cannot meet you in person. However, I hope that this online presentation can give you enough information and interaction. The motivation of our research is really about how to deal with uncertainties and disturbances when the robot is interacting with the real world environment. So these videos were taken when we are prepared for DARPA Robotics Challenge in 2015. So you can see the robot is driving a vehicle, drilling a hole in the wall, opening a door, and climbing upstairs. In all these applications, we may have some information about the environment, but not precise enough. So it is really important to deal with the uncertainties of the environment and disturbances from the interactions. There has been great progress in whole body control frameworks to deal with these problems. A compliant whole body control can vary uh, depending on hardware and control approaches. For example, we ha may have a position control robot or torque control robot with or without joint torque sensors. And typically we do have forced torque sensors uh, at, the, at the limbs that are interacting with the environment. And we want to implement task priorities with many tasks. And these can be strictly a strict hierarchy or soft hierarchy. And many times inequality constraint has to be met. So there are many uh, topics to be dealt with uh, in this very short talk today. Uh, I would like to focus on uh, our experience using the hardware that we have in the, con in the lab currently. So luckily we have two humanoid robots. One is a position control robot and the other is torque control robot. These robots uh, do not have joint torque sensors. However, we do have force torque sensors on the feet and on the wrist. However, we do not use them uh, for control purposes yet. For control, uh, we are using the operation space control framework, which is a strictly hi hierarchical control structure. So my research in this direction has started quite a long time ago. So on the left, you can see the manipulator is having uh, two contacts on the on the ND, ND factor. And at the same time, the motion is controlled within the null space of the contact force space. And on the right, you can see that we have an additional contact on the third link of a robot. So at the time, the focus was more on the uh, simultaneous and precise control of motion and force. And this control framework was extended uh, to deal with uh, floating-based robots. So very first equation is the equation of motion for in joint space. And that has a contact force because the typical uh, floating-based robot uh, has a contact force uh, uh, often with the, the feet to stand on. And from that, we can drive the equation of motion in joint space, uh, in operation space. And operation space force can be uh, computed using the dynamics. And we have to compute the actuated torque to be applied on actual actuators. So to do that, uh, we are using selection matrix to account for unactuated floating base characteristics. And uh, if there is a null space, then we can use the null space control uh, to uh, control the rest of the body other than the tasks. This was tested in a simulation at the time because we didn't have uh, hardware to test it on. And you can see the ladder climbing, manipulation with walking was possible at the time that uh, we can uh, control the contact forces and motion at the same time on uh, multiple contact points. Uh, later, to deal with more tasks, uh, we have developed hierarchical control task control structure with the sequence of node space projection matrices. Those are on the left. And when uh, there is a contact redundancy, this uh, is possible when we have uh, multiple limbs are, are interacting with uh, the environment. Then we can have a possibility that we can distribute contact forces uh, without disturbing the motion of the robot. And balancing control is really, really critical, of course, for floating robot. So we really have to observe mid uh, GMP condition and non-slipping conditions not to fall down. And this, uh, uh, this balancing control or this condition uh, is uh, met by sacrificing lower priority tasks 
uh, in our control framework currently. So in the end, we can meet this uh, inequality constraint uh, while we can execute the higher priority tasks. So uh, as a result, the result of this control approach is almost equivalent to the result from other control approaches such as uh, hierarchical quadratic programming approaches because uh, we are uh, in essence meeting these inequality equality constraints and at the same time we are uh, controlling task with uh, task priorities strictly hierarchical control and this was tested on actual hardware so on the left you can see that uh, we are controlling CON height as the highest priority task. And as a secondary task, we are controlling COM, horizontal motion, orientation, and swing foot. And when there's impact, CMP condition is violated that uh, swing foot is moving, be not because, uh, uh, by, uh, because of the impact force from the disturbance, but from the uh, control force. Because we are sacrificing the control of the swing foot to meet this CMP condition. On the right, you can see that the robot is stepping on unknown object and it can uh, uh, compliantly uh, step on this object and control the zero motion while balancing. So this uh, shows uh, quite well the main characteristics of using a torque control robot. Uh, in our case, uh, we are using a current command in, uh, instead of joint torque sensors feedback because we do not have them. Very recently, uh, we ha uh, have developed a very reactive walking using these control strategies. So the main idea is that we are applying force on CON toward the swing foot. Swing foot is uh, moving forward or walking. And we are monitoring the capture point of a robot. And when the capture point of a robot is on top of a swing foot, then we switch the swing foot to be a supporting foot and supporting foot to be a swing foot. And we are keep continuing this sequence uh, to a walk to make it walk. And this creates quite reactive and compliant uh, walking motion. So on the right, you can see that a person applies a force and this force may be in equilibrium with the force on the CON, then the robot can stop in the middle of walking. So at this moment, the CON, I mean, I mean capture point is in between the two, two feet. That's why the robot stopped and uh, the robot can resume when the force is released. So uh, this was very uh, a demo nice demonstration of compliant uh, motion using a torque control robot. However, we uh, may have may want to uh, have uh, accurate position tracking performance for uh, some other tasks. So for example, we may want to accurately control uh, position of feet or a COM. However, currently with our uh, hardware and control framework, we cannot do it very well. So we are looking at this problem in various aspects, joint compliance, communication delay between main computer and motor drivers, state destination, uh, modeling errors. Maybe all these uh, factors are all linked together. So however, uh, we cannot attack all of them at once. So we are looking at joint compliance uh, for now. And joint compliance is not a new problem in robotics. So there has been much research uh, how to deal with uh, joint compliance of manipulator uh, in joint space control mostly. However, we think that humanoid has uh, probably larger compliance on some joints because uh, we, the humanoid robot does not have large base unlike a uh, typical uh, manipulator. So this is because Swing a leg sometimes has to be supporting leg, and supporting leg sometimes has to be a swing leg. And because of that, we have to design uh, much lightly the legs, and uh, the actuators are going to be smaller and uh, have uh, less uh, stiff uh, gears. And uh, I think this is the main, we think that this is the main reason. Uh, and uh, to deal with it, uh, we are trying to use a simple approach first. So typically when we uh, derive the rigid biodynamics of robot, we assume that the joint angle is the same as the motor angle, and then uh, we derive this rigid biodynamics. 
However, when there's a compliance in between the motor and link, uh, these angles are different. So in our current approach, what we have done is that uh, we use the link uh, side dynamics uh, as feed forward control only, such as gravity compensation. And uh, motor side dynamics is used uh, for feedback control. So motor side information is used to derive the joint space dynamics. And from that, the operation space dynamics is derived to control the robot. And this was quite successful to increase the accuracy of position, track, position uh, uh, tracking performance. So you can see the difference uh, between these two videos. And this was uh, reported in uh, last year at IRIS. We, we had another big problem with this robot. And the, the problem was that we didn't have the upper body. So whenever we call it a humanoid, uh, people like com uh, comment that this is not a humanoid, right? By talking about this is a two-leg robot. So we were not happy about these comments. So we finally uh, designed and built upper body last year. And we have now new robot called Dokebi. And this robot is saying hello in Korean way. 안녕하세요. And we are very happy about this robot. And I really expect to have much uh, nicer research result using this mode robot. Another interesting uh, experience, uh, res research experience that I want to share today with you is using a position control robot. So when we uh, participated in the RC uh, DARPA Robotics uh, Finals in 2015, we didn't have a torque, uh, torque control robot. So we had to use a position control robot uh, called Thurman from Robotics. For controlling this position control robot, there had been, has been great research for position control robot and typically using force torque sensors on the, on the limbs, such as feet and uh, the wrist. So we thought that we can just implement it and then we can win the competition very easily. Not easily though. Anyway, and uh, this was not possible for us because uh, we had on, on very, very unexpected problem. So robot had very large compliance uh, on some of the joint, joints and those were hip and ankle. And the reason probably is the same, the reason that I explained before, right? And uh, because of that, we have deflection due to gravity and this deflection creates a lot of, a lot of problem for walking and other motions. So we had to take a look at what's going on with the actuator module. And we found that the gear has uh, compliance and uh, Luckily, or uh, 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 find, uh, we found that this is quite linear, so that we can estimate this uh, deflection from this linear model. So what we can do is we uh, compute the gravity torque from the model of the robot. And then from the torque, we can uh, use this uh, linear characteristic to estimate how much deflection it is. And then we command additional command to the motors to compensate for it. And that was quite effective for uh, slow walking. However, later when we deal with the actual situation that the, the ground is not really flat, then it still has quite a vibration uh, when we hit the ground and unexpected uh, like object. So we had to finally install additional encoder at the joint to measure this vibration and use the LQR control to suppress this vibration. And also we implemented disturbance observer and very accidentally, what we have found was that uh, we can use a pos positive feedback of estimated disturbance. Then this was very, very nice for making uh, robust walking. So the idea is that uh, we estimate disturbance using a disturbance observer and then we move the motor or command the motor in the same, di same direction as the disturbance, then it was very, very helpful for walking. So you can see on the left video that it steps on an unknown object, and then uh, we estimate the disturbance and we move the motor in the same direction as the, uh, the dis estimated disturbance and walking much uh, compliantly. And in the second middle video and on the right, uh, you can see that even 
uh, ha having uh, more like disturbances uh, from uh, the person or from unknown object, you can still deal with this to have robust walking. And this uh, result was quite interesting because we are using a position control robot and even without force torque sensors. We are not actually against using force torque sensors. Uh, we are not ready yet. So this uh, research using force torque sensors will be our future work. So I have shown uh, today uh, that uh, our research on compliant whole body control approaches using these two robots, one a torque control robot and the other a position control robot. So before I finish, uh, I would like to uh, introduce other exciting research work in our lab. So we are working on many manipulation projects. So the Peginol uh, task using two arm tool hand robot. So here we are using uh, control based upon the operation space control framework. And we are trying to assemble an IKEA furniture using two Franca robot there. But uh, I don't think this is enough. So may, we may have to use three or four uh, Franca robots in the end. And we are also working on mobile manipulation control uh, for many tasks and uh, task transitions. Uh, here we are uh, developing uh, based upon hierarchical quadratic programming approaches. And uh, we are also working on telemanipulation using a humanoid robot. We participate on uh, many interesting uh, interdisciplinary research. So you can see that uh, robot, robot is acting as a red evil in art festival. We developed a rehabilitation robot for a patient with back, lower back pain and drumming. And one of my really favorite projects was uh, developing a CPR robot. Uh, during uh, many experiments, we have saved, we have uh, revived uh, many pigs. And uh, I really hope that this uh, is uh, commercially really developed so that we can actually use it. So final project I want to introduce is our autonomous valet parking. So you can see that the car is entering a parking lot and uh, our autonomous car has a topological map of the, par uh, the parking lot and decide where to go. And uh, when uh, it is located the, a vacant parking space using vision and it does motion uh, planning and using uh, that information, it tracks the planned motion and park. And this was really recently uh, demonstrated in our, our parking lot. And I'm really happy about this uh, nice result. I would like to uh, show our lab. So this is actually our lab with my students working very hard on our uh, robot. And at the end of the day, they are uh, hungry because they work too much and they're having ramen very, very deliciously. And this was on a uh, TV commercial four years ago uh, in Korea. <laughs> so finally, I really would like to thank all my lab members for their hard work. And also, I would like to thank you very much for listening to my talk today. Thank you.